I used to be just like you. I'd go out all the time. Club after club after club, night after night, drink after drink. You see, when we went out, we went big. Excess was the name of the game. We used to go to this club called the, uh, called the Square, because it was a square building, right? And it had three floors, different genres of music on every floor, and we used to go there and paint the town red. There was Joe, Dave, Deck, Daryl, and Tom. Now, Daryl was the sort of person who'd get himself into uh, situations that he couldn't necessarily get himself out of. <laughs> and Tom, well, Tom was always the man with the supply, if you know what I mean. And it'd be the same thing every time. We'd go in, fuck the bouncer, straight up the stairs, straight to the bar, two shots, one, two, neck and then we'd chase that with whatever chemicals Tom had on him. <laughs> we used to go to this uh, this festival, Red Fest, you might know it. We went there for five years running. The first four years were great and every year got better and better and better and everything was going great until that last year. That was when something changed. Something happened to me and I, I didn't know what at the time. You see, I'd had, I'd had a lot. <laughs> All the drink, as many drugs as I could get my hands on and I was fucked. Proper. You know when you're at festivals and you've, you've had a bit too much and you get separated from the group. I mean, I couldn't see three inches in front of my face, so I needed to find them. I needed to get back to the group. So I'm walking through the campsite and just tent after tent after tent after tent. That's when I, I get this feeling like I'm being watched. I turn around to check, but there's nothing there. I keep walking, my, my pace quickens. I pass another tent and another tent and another tent and then I get this shiver down my spine. And that's when I can feel this breath on the back of my neck. I feel something like saliva dripping onto me and as I turn around, BANG! the side of my ribs. I just feel this searing pain. I don't know what happened. I mean, I woke up in the same place and checked myself over. I seemed all right. No marks. I guess I was just hallucinating. Cut to the next night, I've got back from the festival and I've managed to sleep off a seven day hangover in one day. One day. I'm feeling invincible. Tom phones me up and he's like, yeah, are we going out again? And I'm like, of course we are. So we hit the newest club in town. It's called Mango. It might have a silly name, but it's got five floors and more genres of music than you can think of playing across several different rooms. The story's pretty much the same, you know, we queue up, we get in, but this time it's hi to the bouncer, because you know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna piss them off on our first outing. We go up the stairs, we get through the first floor, we go straight to the bar, two shots, neck, neck. And then this hand comes over my shoulder and waves a little bag in front of my face. But this time, I say, no, I'm, I'm not feeling it. And Tom says, you're not feeling it? What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. All right, he says, more for me. So I get a few more drinks in me and I get a bit more lively. You know, I make my way out onto the dance floor and I spot, in my humble opinion, probably the hottest girl in the room. 
I make my way over, put a few moves, and she looks me up and down, decides I'm all right, we dance a little bit, and then I break away. No, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna head to the bar. And for the first time in my life, I asked for something at the bar that I've never asked for before. I need a glass of water, please, mate. Because <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little bit weird, and I don't know why. You know, usually at this point, I blame it on the drugs, but I hadn't taken anything. My heart is beginning to beat out of my chest. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. All I can hear in my eardrums is the sound of my heartbeat quickening and... That's when my mouth starts to fill with saliva and the noise in that place becomes piercing. I can't take it anymore. I have to get out of there. So I go, and bear in mind, I'm up on the third floor, so I make my way across the dance floor, and at this point, my heart is still beating. I get down the second set of stairs, I'm across the first floor. At this point, I shove someone out of the way, and I can't even stop to say sorry, mate. And that's when the fresh air hits me. And it doesn't help. I look around, and... My mouth is filling with saliva. I look at these people and for some reason, I am hungry. And I just know that in the back of my mind, I know that I need to get as far away from this place as possible, so I run. And it feels like my ribs are breaking, but I carry on running and I'm, I'm running faster than I have ever run before. I finally get away from these people and I keep to the shadows. I see people who have obviously left the club making their way home. They don't know I'm there, but I am watching them from the shadows, stalking through the alleyways, selecting my target. And that's when I spot her. The girl that I've been dancing with, I see her and... Something's different. Not her, me. As I stalk her, crawling through the shadows, waiting, readying myself for that opportunity to pounce, my hunger is unquenchable. The saliva in my mouth is still running. And that's when it happens. I leapt. And as I sink my teeth into her, I wake up the next day with these, these memories ingrained in my mind and they are not mine. And it's all over the news. A woman found in pieces and it's driving me crazy. I go to work. And I can't be there. But I try. I try and keep things at bay. I try and keep things under wraps. I try and hide who I really am. And I make it through the day without a single incident. But that's when John happens. You see, he's away with the fairies most of the time in his own little world. And today, this doesn't bode well for him. John's moving one of these cages. You know, the big steel cages that they keep food in, that they cart things around in supermarkets. That's, that's where I work, that's what I do. That's what I did. You see, as I'm walking to the back of the store, I see those double doors in sight. 
and I'm like, yes, <laughs> I've made it, I've made it through another day. And then John, ha! He smashes right into me with this cage and that is it. I grabbed John by the throat. The fuck do you think you're doing? I smash the cage and I pin him to the fucking glass on the side of one of our refrigerated shelves. And I say to John, you better say sorry now. And John's looking at me, wide eyes. He can't believe what he's seeing. He looks, he looks scared. I'm not surprised. And I can feel the sinews in John's neck being crushed. He can't breathe. I'm squeezing his throat so tightly that he can't get air into his lungs. And that's when I catch a reflection of my eyes. They've changed. They've turned this, this amber color. And it takes everything I've got to peel my fingers off of John's throat and let him go. He drops to the floor like a sack of shit. And my heart is racing. It is beating in my eardrums. My breath is shallow. I cannot control myself any longer. I need to be outside. I can't be around people right now because I don't know what I'll do. So I go, I burst through the double doors, I make my way through the back foyer and out the final back doors to the courtyard where they keep the vans and lucky for me, some pricks left one of the rear doors open because that's where I'm gonna go. I make a beeline for that, I decide to go straight to that truck and I pull that door shut so I can be alone. so I can be contained. And the next thing I know, I'm in this van, practically rocking to comfort myself, caught in a struggle between, between this rage and this sense of self. The floor is vibrating, I can smell the fumes from the exhaust and I am trapped in this conflict between the man and the beast. You see, something had awakened inside of me and I'd reached the point where I couldn't fight it anymore. The vibration stops. I can no longer smell the fumes and I am stuck in this box and I can't get out. I started to pace and that's when it happens. But this time, my heart doesn't race. No, this time, my heart is steady. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. This time I was aware of every little thing and when I began to change, I felt it all. My fingernails began to grow and extend. The searing pain of my bones changing. My sinews twisting and lengthening and crunching my teeth and my jaw extend and warp and I burst through the side of this van and when I get outside I can smell the forest I could hear everything but it wasn't piercing it wasn't invasive it was just amplified and with it, this sense of comfortability. 
like I'm where I'm meant to be. I ran as far away as I could, the leaves crunching under my pads, my breath hanging in the air as I panted, gathering more and more and more speed. My eyesight is sharper than it's ever been and I can hear everything in that forest. I stopped for a while to lament my isolation. Oh, I had so many friends. But this is the way it has to be. And if this is where I'm meant to be, then it means that this is where you're not supposed to be. Don't come here. Don't try to find me. Don't chase me. Don't corner me. Don't come here. Because you won't find me. You'll find the beast. This is my forest. These are my woods. This is my territory. And if you come here, you won't make it out alive.